You know, with season two just around the corner, I thought it'd be really fun if we went back and look at some of the coolest characters from season one from their perspective. And none of them encapsulates that more than Savika, who by all metrics is totally amazing. And also it's kind of funny, right? So imagine this, you are Savika, you are probably the most badass woman in the entirety of the Undercity. You care about two things, you love a little bit of gambling, and also you just like to fight. For the longest time you thought your best opportunity was to run with Vanda, the guy that built the lanes over a pile of corpses. Anyway, it all comes to a head one day when a commotion happens topside. A building got blown up and you find out that Vanda's new runs were the cause of it. And you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, well, this is a perfect opportunity to give it back to Topside if they're going to come and exercise their will over us. And Vanda tells you, no, that's not going to happen because I don't want to give up these kids. And you think, wow, Vanda's gotten weak, like really weak. He would rather protect his stray cats than give it to Topside. And you tell him, you say, ma'am, we should fight against Topside. They can't do this to us. And he's like, I can't. I want to protect my people now. So you say to him, the old Vanda wouldn't be scared about a little bit of blood. And he says, do I look scared to you? And you say, worse, you look weak. And that's true. He's become soft, like real soft. He's prioritizing those runs over the prosperity of the Undercity, and that is something you just can't get behind. So you decide in that moment, it's time for you to flip signs, a turncoat if you will, and go to his old rival, Silco. And Silco, he doesn't care about anything except for money and power, there is no pretense of protection, there's no pretense of anything, it is just get the money and run. And he has a new product called Shimmer, and you've seen Shimmer in action, he's used it on this budget Viego looking gun, and it turns him into an 8 foot tall monster that is ready to throw down. So you, you, you're you very much supporting his cause. So one day Silco tells you, hey look, I'm gonna go and take care of some business. He takes Walmart Viogo with him and he wants you to meet him out at the factory at the edge of town, to which you happily oblige. And you go there and you wait for him and then a few hours later he comes back and the Freuded Up Freak Show is dragging Vander like a rag doll and ties him up in a chair. And all you have to do now is wait because his three runs appear and they're ready to save his life. And you think, well, there's 30 of us and only three of you. What can you actually do? But then the, the pink haired one, Vi, she steps forward and she looks like she's ready to go. She's wearing Vander's old gauntlets, you know, the things that he used to build the lanes with. And you're just like, what can one little girl do? So you send the biggest guy in and while well, he gets one shot and you're oh okay she's got the moves but you don't want to step in at this point because you think fighting teenagers is a bit a little bit too low for you you don't want to get your hands messy in that one still you have to respect Silco's willingness to kill children because it does mean that he will do anything to get power but anyway the pink-haired lunatic goes to town on your entire team and Silco gets freaked out by that situation so what does he do well he gives Salvation Army another dose of shimmer and that guy well he goes seven feet tall again and grabs Vi by the goddamn throat he looks like she's about to die but somehow manages to squirm her way and close the door but that's not going to stop our 99 cent Viego, is it? He's going to get in and he's going to take her like some cookie lol impersonator. But out of the corner of your eye as he's banging on the door and trying to get in and you see a little monkey going ting 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 and you're like, oh that's interesting. Oh it's a bomb. You don't have to get Silco out of the way and maybe yourself too but you're just not fast enough and for your troubles you lose an arm. That's great, but at least you're still alive, right? So you go downstairs and you see the two little girls arguing, the pink-haired one and the blue-haired one. And the pink-haired one basically says to the blue-haired one, why don't you just fuck off? We don't want you here anymore, you're a jinx, all you do is ruin everything. And you're thinking, yeah, probably, that girl does look very unlucky. But anyway, Silco goes up to her and he's like, oh, my poor sweet summer child, let me, let me fillet you like a fish. But instead, the little girl wraps her arms around Silco because she thinks she he's coming to save her or something. And Silco, rather than kill this little thing that could end up giving her some kind of retribution act in 20 years time, takes her in and you, you, you don't think that's a bad idea at all. Fast forward a few years and you're not complaining. Under Silco's leadership, Shimmer has turned the Undercity into an enterprise and everyone is now rich. Like filthy, filthy rich. You have more money than you know what to do with and do you know what you did? You invested in a new metal arm that actually uses Shimmer itself and it is fantastic. Whoever thought Shimmer could be a lubricant for metal? But you've basically kind of become Silco's enforcer. <laughs> 
for lack of a better word, but you're also kind of like his right hand lady. But one day you are doing your regular Tuesday afternoon, which is bribing officials and getting more shimmer into the city. This is a big shipment, this is a huge shipment, so you decided to employ Jinx to make sure things go smoothly. You don't really like working with Jinx because she is actually a deranged lunatic and her name is incredibly fitting. She ruins absolutely everything, but my god isn't she good in a fight. And she's very good with a gun too. And there's this band of misfit renegades that keep on appearing here and there that try to disrupt your flow of shimmer. You don't like them so much, they're called the firelights and you want them very much removed. You're about to sign the paperwork and you get tossed against a wall with some crystal stuff and you're just like great not again man but anyway the firelights they come in and they torch your product and so jinx decides it's time for her to make her dramatic entrance and give them a piece of her mind but then she rips off the mask of one and it reveals her to look suspiciously a lot like the sister that she once had and she ends up going into a completely psychotic break. You've never seen Jinx like this. You knew that she was completely deranged and borderline schizophrenic. But this time, she went completely bananas and ended up turning your entire team into Swiss cheese, for which you are not very thankful of, but somehow you managed to dodge all those bullets. So you go and tell Silk about this. You tell him, hey, bro, like, I think Jinx might actually be too dangerous for our cause. And he tells you, well, actually it's your fault. You're the one that failed here. You were supposed to protect the shipment and you didn't. And you're just like, man, the audacity on this guy. I got frozen in a crystal for five minutes and you're saying that it's my fault? Bro, it's not my fault. She completely lost her mind and ended up shooting up our entire team. We lost good men. She only killed one of theirs. She literally killed one of theirs and she killed like three of ours. Her, our big guy that doesn't actually do much except for get one shot by people. But he's he seems to be prioritizing his daughter, well, it's more like a chaotic little pet, than the preservation of your shimmer supply. He's blinded by his borderline father-daughter fetish than actually creating profits. And that's starting to rub you the wrong way. And you're beginning to think that his eye for business is not so queer eye anymore. But over the next few days, you hear about even more commotions. Jinx has gone up topside, she's shot up a bunch of enforcers and killed a few of them. And Silco's surprisingly not upset about that, even though that means that we are going to have problems. Actually, he seems pretty happy because for her troubles, she got a little blue gem. And while that is the thing that powers Hextech, you still think that you should be focusing on the show. Shimmer. That is the lifeblood of the Undercity now. That is what gives you your money. But whatever, who are you to question your glorious leader, right? It's not your place. You're just there to enforce his will and make sure things run smoothly so you can get your payday. So you go and you do what you do best, which is gambling and taking things from random chumps. And I mean, you even got his nose one time. As you're about to win with your slightly cheated hand, someone knees you in the face out of goddamn nowhere. And so you're thinking, wow, who, who needs someone? in the face that's like a real sucker punch move no so you come to and you're just rubbing your face and you're ready to throw down on that person that just completely blindsided you and you see it's that pink haired girl but she's all grown up now and you're like wow i thought you were dead and she's just like how dare you betray vander and some self-righteous nonsense and you you politely remind her that Vanda had his chance and so you start getting ready to run the ones. You just realise, okay, I have to kind of get a little bit serious out here. So, glorious reveal, you throw out your metal arm. And so you immediately decide that it is time to get the shimmer flowing because, you know, this is not someone you want to take lightly. You have seen her fight. You know she's talented. You know she's good. You guys start running the ones and you give her a quick headbutt to the face. Classic Savika move, but she gets the upper hand in some way. And during the fight, you're thinking of your old buddy Salvation Army, Viego, and how he would be so good right now because you could just sick him on her and he would probably win the fight outright. This 1v1 is not going so well. So you hit up the shimmer again and this time you start getting the upper hand as you're about to kind of win she knees you in the punani and you're thinking bloody hell man this girl she all she does is sucker punch people like really who fights like this next thing you know she kicks you through a goddamn wall and you're like lying on the floor and she's leaning over you and she asks you where is silco keeping jinx and you just kind of laugh to yourself like <laughs> She works for him, it's like Silco's daughter, and that rattles her real good. And so you finally think, oh, I can get my revenge now. So you skewer her like a shish kebab. Serves her right, right? I mean, good fight on my ass, or she does a sucker punch, people. Just when you're about to finish the job, however, someone blasts your shoulder, rendering it completely useless. And you're thinking, man, like, they must either be the best shot in the world to aim for specifically that point, 
Or you're too important for the plot right now and you can't die because they missed. So you scurry back to the Silco and he has the audacity to tell you that you're making a mess and you're like, oh, I'm gonna punch you in a minute. But you explain to him that the person that did this to you is Jinx's sister. And he's like, she's back. Oh no, she's alive? And that has made him absolutely shook. And he tells you, keep tabs on her. I'm gonna go sort this business out with our enforcer friend. So you go around the lanes, you're trying to find her and you lose her, unfortunately. So you go back to tell Silco exactly that you lost her and it turns out it's not Silco in the chair, it's actually Jinx, and she's just, oh, you lost who, did you? And you think to yourself, oh, bloody hell. Of course she has some elaborate trap set up. Next thing you know, you're tied to a chair, and you've got Jinx sitting there doing some kind of unhinged interrogation, which you're not too afraid of. It's a bit of a win-win, really. Either she kills you and you're free of this idiocracy, or, you know, you tell her about Vi and she completely implodes, and it looks like she's about to implode. But then she says, oh, 10 out of 10, toots. And you're thinking, bloody hell, no one's ever called me toots in my entire life. What the hell is wrong with this person? But anyway, she ends up spinning you unconscious and tying you to the ceiling. And for the second time in a few days, you are left waiting for someone to come and untie you and you have to wait for Silco to return and when he does he looks up and unties you and brings you down and you just start discussing the day's events because today's been a pretty busy day all things considered he's like I need to go and find Jinx he's like no bro the, the chem barons want to have a surprise meeting but to try and calm him down you try to talk to him and you're like look man I know Jinx is a schizophrenic raging lunatic but give her time she will come back because she clearly has issues and she doesn't know where she is right now and you go to the chem barons and you think to yourself as you're walking in man how is it that people look like this here like we have a, a ginger woman that's got a permanently broken neck and no nose that produces more mucus than half of a country when it's all suffering from covid you've got a guy that looks like a dilapidated pudding a girl that looks like an heiress that's actually surprisingly normal looking and a yordle like creature that looks like he's on a 24-hour crack bender and of course there's mr fashion the jaw also known as finn the guy that really should consider his choices because he looks like he either got dressed in the dark or he's a 14 year old kid that had an idea of what looks cool and my god he looks ridiculous. He looks even worse than the dilapidated old pudding guy, at least he, he looks like a regular person, right? But Silco walks in and he gives his monologue because they clearly look like they're about to throw a coup. And he's like, look, I raised you all from the ashes and I made Zorn into what it is today. And he uses this air from the Mayans to basically choke them all out. <laughs> That's not breaking the Geneva Convention. And I mean, depriving people of oxygen makes them turn around real fast. And I mean, Silco seems surprisingly impervious to it. And you wonder how that is. Maybe he's more than meets the eye, but he is really turning into a bit of an arrogant sod. And with the meeting over, you go back to running the last drop and making sure that everything is going smoothly. And in the meantime, you decide to fix and upgrade your arm because my God, you've been walking around with a broken arm for about two days now and no one's given you the opportunity to fix it but things are kind of settled down here and you can really do it so imagine you're surprised when the fashionless twerp comes in and tries to use his not so sweet moves to play to your ego but rather than looking like a smooth operator he just kind of looks like a fucking idiot but anyway some of what he says makes a little bit of sense to you because he is basically saying that silco is starting to unravel and maybe you should be considering different alternatives that is until he says there are bigger fish implying that he is a bigger fish than silco and you're like bro like i ha you had me until that point now I just think you're about as cringe as it gets. Something happens and a bunch of people from the top side come down and exercise justice and kill like quite a lot of your people, including one of the Ken Baron's children. And you're there and you're mourning the loss of like a shimmer factory as well as a bunch of other things and, and maybe also the kid on the side, right? And the girls seem surprisingly upset, but you're thinking to yourself, but, but you have all the money in the world, don't you, lady? Like, why would you send your kid to go and work in the factory when he's like 10 years old? You're a Ken Baron, like, huh? Are you kidding me? Like, what? Why would you? I know we're the Undercity, but 
child labor when you have enough money to support yourself and you know Silka don't give a shit Jinx has just killed your main enforcer and you know there have now been a huge disruption in your shimmer supply so you look at Mr. T we got at home as he's flicking his lighter like a 15 year old boy that keeps playing with his butterfly knife but I mean working for this guy would actually make your skin crawl but still at the same time you think maybe you can play both sides here so you go with Mr. Twit to ambush Silco so you go with Mr. Twit to deal with Silco and he starts sitting down, opens his mouth, and as he's talking, you're like, bloody hell, why am I working for this guy? He is so annoying. And he's going on and on and on about how Silco is old, he's past his prime, and how he needs to let people new take him, and that he's now going to kill him. We built the lanes with respect. It's about respect and loyalty. That's what makes this place work. Without it, this place is completely worthless. And you think, well, actually, yeah. If we lose someone like Silco, who's got the old way of thinking, we get more people like this other dickhead, who just I just couldn't handle that level of cringe you're too old for that stuff man you're too old to deal with cringe people like this whatever he is so you do what any self-respecting person would do in that situation you kill that guy because fuck me he deserves it so he asked you were you tempted and you said for a guy like him I'd rather lose the other arm and both my legs he's just so cringe and with more people like him I think I would actually die of the cringe so you go back and do your thing at the last drop and you're gambling away again because you know this is like your favorite pastime nothing like accumulating more money and taking money from hapless idiots um there's a commotion outside next thing you know someone's walking through the front door and it's Vi and she's wearing some new gloves but they ain't your regular gardening gloves in fact they look pretty goddamn spicy but whatever you've got some improvements to your arm so you think this is going to be a bit of a fair fight you get some shimmer on the go and you're ready to run the ones that's a bit of a back and forth in all honesty that is until she tosses a pool table at you and you think mother goddamn you're back to this old tricks okay well now it's time for you to play dirty so you whip out your new fancy glowing sword and Vi is completely taken aback from that and she's like oh god you're playing dirty too how am I gonna have my edge now and she makes a mistake allowing you to cut open one of those gauntlets and then you give her some poetic justice and knee her in the face knocking her out cold and she's lying on the floor and you're just taking a moment to relish in the victory because my god it feels good to get some payback on this goddamn person and she's lying on the floor she's writhing around and then she actually managed to stand back up and, and so you start running the ones one more time and it's a bit more sluggish this time and just as you're about to land the killing blow her gloves pull more bullshit out of their ass and actually create a force field around her she knocks you away and then pulls you back ripping off your arm and kicks you to the floor and you're just like okay figures he would take overpowered magical gloves to finally shut me up and when you come to, you find out Silco's actually been killed. He was killed by Jinx. And you're like, wow, I did not see that coming. And you have to figure out where you go from here. But that is a story for another day. If you like the video, please feel free to like and comment and all that other stuff. Just a big thank you to my members, especially Lavender, Yuri, and Alan.